This is the Abilemno Pictish Standing Stone 1. It forms a group of various stunning Pictish standing symbol stones in the village of Abilemno near Forfar, with the stones dated to around 500 to 800 AD, and they give us a fascinating glimpse into the mysterious culture of the ancient Picts. In this video, we will unravel the secrets of five Pictish standing stones, and look at why the Picts carved these stunning images into stone. But back to the symbology of Abilemno 1. The top symbol looks to be a serpent, and animals are a common feature of Pictish symbol stones in general. The middle symbol is much more mysterious, however. It is known as the double disc in Zedrod, but the meaning of this symbol is unclear. Some argue that the double disc represents a wheel of some sort, with the Zedrod perhaps serving as some sort of axis to the wheel. Another theory suggests that the disc represents stones which were used for grinding grain with the Zedrod representing a single stalk of wheat. Now although these theories are definitely plausible, when I look at it, I think it could represent the sun, or perhaps the sun and the moon, or some other planetary or astrological arrangement. Perhaps the Zedrod represents a thunderbolt as well, or another depiction of nature. Or perhaps the Zedrod was a Pictish symbol of power, as it has that feel to it. The double disc can be found on other Pictish stones, with or without the Zedrod as well, which is interesting to note. But what do you think the double disc and Zedrod symbol means? Please let me know in the comments below. The bottom symbol is a mirror and comb, another pretty common Pictish symbol. It may simply reflect the object itself, or it could symbolise marriage or female wealth. Others argue it has a more metaphorical meaning such as the representation of the soul, or a reflection of life on earth. This is the second Abilemno Pictish standing stone. It is carved from old red sandstone, and it stands around 2.3 metres, or about 7.5 feet tall, and has a much more religious influence. It is located in the Abilemno Kirkyard. The stone features a Celtic cross and various intricate Celtic patterns. Many Picts did adopt Christianity, and this stone shows the fusion of Christian and Celtic cultures. The reverse of this stone includes a stunning depiction of a battle in great detail. You can see warriors on horseback, some holding spears, and others seemingly with bows and arrows, or some sort of crossbow in hand. On the bottom right, you can see a warrior appearing to be falling to the ground, perhaps a casualty in this battle. Although debated, one argument that this depicts the Great Pictish victory at the Battle of Donecton against the Northumbrians. This is the Abilemno Pictish Standing Stone 3. It again features a Celtic cross and intricate Celtic patterns. Below the cross is two angels that look to be reading books, perhaps the Bible. At the bottom of this there are animals, one definitely a deer or a stag, with the other side looking to be a violent depiction of the animal kingdom. On the back of this stone is once again the double disc and Zedrod. Above this, it seems to be a version of another mysterious Pictish symbol, the Crescent V-Rod. The crescent component of this symbol is thought to represent the sun or the moon. The V is often composed of arrows, one pointing downwards and the other upwards, and it has been suggested that it represents the arrival of a soul at birth, or its return upon death. This is Abilemno 4. It depicts a horseshoe and a mysterious symbol known as the Pictish Beast. Some argue that the Pictish Beast is a representation of a water horse or a Kelpie, an important feature of Celtic mythology. Another Pictish stone that was found in a ruined castle near to Abilemno is known as the Woodray Stone. The stone would have contained a beautiful Celtic cross, although some has eroded, with animals and Celtic patterns around it. The rear contains a warrior on horseback, animals and once again, a double disc, but this time with no Zedrod. But why was there such a concentration of Pictish symbol stones in this area? And more broadly, why did the Picts even bother to carve these stunning stones? 
very quickly if you would like to support this work through Patreon, buymeacoffee.com or through my merch store. All the links will be in the description below. I should also mention as well, I was actually planning on, on visiting Abalerno in, per, in person today, um, but unfortunately the stones, the, the Pictish standing stones in the village, or most of them, um, just at the side of the road, are covered in wooden boxes for the winter to prevent frost damage. So I'm going to make a video on location there next year. Well, in relation to the former question and why there's such a concentration of Pictish stones in that area, Gordon Noble, who's a professor of archaeology at the University of Aberdeen, says that there was perhaps a very wealthy Pictish settlement in that area. And Gordon and his team actually just found another Pictish stone in the last kind of year or two, a find of a lifetime in that area. I actually have his book on the Picts that he wrote a couple of years ago, um, I think with one of his colleagues. That's definitely a good read. Um, and there is different um, symbols, you know, Pictish symbol stone um, references uh, and so much information in there, um, as well as some really nice illustrations um, of Pictish symbol stones. So you can see... And the book in general is packed with so much information, um, so it is worth checking out in general. But in relation to the second question, why did the Picts bother to carve such beautiful images into stone? Well, as far as I understand, a time machine hasn't been invented yet, unless there's some mad scientist in the crowd um, that's been keeping a secret. Um, but it is really interesting to note that the Pictish symbol stones and other stones like it around the world basically serve as portals through time. And it is an interesting thought to wonder whether the Picts were aware of that, whether they were aware of the legacy, um, of the need to kind of mark, mark their culture and their beliefs in a moment in time. Uh, and these Pictish symbol stones definitely mark the Picts, um, and they're one of the, the only real references to the Picts from them um, that we have in the historical archaeological record, as the Picts didn't really write anything down. More obviously, the, the symbol stones were a way for the Picts to mark the world around them and their beliefs. Obviously, in the Pictish symbol stones, we see lots of animals and some mythical beasts as well, um, and maybe some insights into their beliefs and their mythology. It was also an artistic expression for the Picts. Obviously there's a lots of skill uh, and detail and, and time that must have went into carving and designing the, these beautiful stones. It is interesting to think as well, and please let me know your thoughts in the comments below, whether Pictish symbol stones were maybe a, a status symbol in Pictish culture. I've not really seen too many references to that, but it obviously doesn't seem too much of a leap of, of imagination um, that perhaps Pictish symbol stones were a real demonstration of power and wealth uh, in Pictish culture in general. Although the Picts remain a somewhat mysterious people, the Pictish symbol stones, the standing stones, give a real glimpse of fascinating insight into their mysterious culture. Now it is interesting to note that the Pictish beast symbol may be a representation of a Kelpie. But what is the role of a Kelpie in Irish and Scottish mythology? To find out, please click here. Like I say, if you would like to support this work through my merch store, through Patreon or through buymeacoffee.com and help me produce better videos, all the links will be in the description below. Please subscribe and hit the bell and tell your friends and family about this channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.